WQEX thanks those who have made broadcast of this program possible, our members, and... Blue Cross of Western Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania Blue Shield are pleased to support AgeWise in the interest of better health for area seniors. And Integra Bank, serving the communities of Western Pennsylvania for more than 130 years, offering classic choice, a variety of financial services for active savers and investors. Integra Bank, because you want more from your life and more from your bank. The bank for times like these. And by St. Margaret Memorial Hospital, enriching the lives of seniors and their families. If you're older, you're in capable hands at St. Margaret. For more information, call 784-4144. Statistics show that in spite of all the medical advances being made, heart disease still accounts for 43 percent of all deaths in this country. It seems that the best way to prevent this deadly disease are not found in the doctor's office or in the hospital. I'm Eleanor Shano. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could conquer heart disease, and even better if we could do it without drugs or surgery? Well, Dr. Harvey Simon says we can, and he's here tonight to tell us how. I'm Eleanor Shano, and so glad you could join us tonight. Chances are you know someone in your family, in your circle of friends who has heart disease. Chances are you probably know someone who has died from heart disease. It is the number one killer in this country. However, heart disease can be prevented and it can be conquered. So says my guest, Dr. Harvey Simon. He's in the studio tonight and I want to welcome you. Doctor, uh, you almost had a heart attack getting here. Doctor just got off the plane and uh, made it from uh, our new airport to the studio in nothing flat. Doctor, you say that um, you feel that maybe this should not have been necessary to write this book, that heart disease should be a rarity, that we know what causes it, and we know how to prevent it. Now, that just sounds blissfully simple. What went wrong? So many things went wrong, it's hard to uh, encapsulate uh, the problems in a moment or two. Our, our modern life has gotten very far away from the lifestyle that the human being is designed to lead. Instead of physical exercise, we have mental stress. Instead of eating vegetable-based, low-fat, low-salt foods, we eat fatty foods high in salt and based in animal products. Um, instead of thinking about the simple things of nutrition and stress control and exercise, we're all looking for the quick fix, the magic cure, the panacea that will treat our hearts. And members of my profession uh, buy into this, uh, by and large, and are looking for the high-tech solution, uh, elaborate ways to treat heart disease instead of the simple, almost common sense ways to prevent heart disease. Well, the reviews uh, for this book, uh, which incidentally is, is just out, it's just been published, uh, have been glowing. I've read comments that say that uh, your approach ha has been wonderful. You have not been up on a soapbox because um, you did some of the wrong things yourself. You were not always slim and trim. You True. were overweight. You have a family history of heart disease. What else? Well, uh, if we go back um, 18 years to age 34, I was basically a heart attack waiting to happen. Uh, I was, if not obese, at least corpulent at 200 pounds. I had a high blood pressure, a very high cholesterol of nearly 300. Uh, certainly high stress work, something that I haven't altogether abandoned. I love my work. Uh, and the family history uh, was really scary. Uh, my mother and her brothers died before age 45. My dad had heart disease and vascular disease before I was even born. 
So I was headed in the wrong direction. I was also totally sedentary. I couldn't even jog a quarter of a mile. And slowly but surely, I began to change, began to learn more about how to change, worked with other physicians, with patients, and uh, have found it a wonderful, enjoyable lifestyle for myself and been very rewarded to be able to pass it on to patients and I hope readers uh, to share those benefits. In case you're interested in credentials, I, I should have told you Dr. Simon is a professor at the Harvard Medical School and he's an internist at Massachusetts General Hospital and he is live in the studio and our phone lines are open 683-1600. You can talk to Dr. Simon. Doctor, we know, we know because we hear every day the, the media is pounding on us, low fat diet, plenty of exercise, but, but you go beyond that. You talk about how to control stress. Um, Give us an example of some things that we can do to conquer heart disease that take us a little beyond just the low-fat diet and the exercise. Well, uh, there are four absolutely critical things that everyone should do. One is the low-fat diet. Another is regular aerobic exercise. A third is avoiding smoke, tobacco smoke, both active and passive smoking. And the fourth thing is to lower blood pressure as much as possible without medications, largely through restricting sodium and other forms of salt in the diet and adding certain other minerals such as calcium and potassium. We should all be doing that. Depending on individual needs, uh, there are a dozen other things that we can consider. And the book has one chapter devoted to each of these other interventions, such as uh, for some people, uh, low-dose aspirin makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. For many people, low-dose alcohol, a glass of wine or two, makes a lot of sense. For most people, eating two to three meals of fish a week makes a lot of sense. For nearly everyone, eating a high fiber diet, particularly uh, getting lots of soluble fiber, such as oat bran, beans, and barley, and other legumes, uh, or nutritional supplements, which you can buy in a drugstore, which give you sol soluble fiber, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so there really is a whole menu of things. I think most uh, heart books, as you point out, give a diet. And what I'm trying to do is provide a menu, a series of options that people can choose among, depending on what they need and what they like. For instance, I, I am pretty diligent practicing what I preach. I don't happen to drink. Uh, I know that low-dose alcohol would reduce my heart disease risk. Fortunately, I no longer need that help since I do all the other things right, and it makes me too sleepy, so I don't do it. Uh, it we don't have a straight and narrow path that everybody has to go along, but a series of options that uh, people can choose among. Okay, let's go. To, let's go to the phones, Doctor. Uh, caller line six, you're on the air with uh, Dr. Harvey Simon. Yes, Eleanor. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to ask the doctor: Has he ever heard of the treatment for uh, blocked arteries called chelation therapy? I have, uh, and it's something that I'm really not enthusiastic about. Uh, when I um, discuss these ways of fighting heart disease without prescriptions, I'm often asked, is this alternative medicine? It really isn't. Each of the interventions that I offer as options is uh, scientifically validated by careful, controlled, responsible uh, medical studies. Chelation therapy and a number of other uh, similar interventions haven't been validated by uh, scientific trials. Medicine has a lot of art in it, uh, has a lot of uh, biological uh, variability, but it, at the core is a science. And chelation has not been studied scientifically and doesn't seem to have a theoretical basis that would justify the uh, time and considerable expense involved in undergoing chelation therapy. Seems to be rather trendy, at, at least I have observed it to be very popular in certain parts of the country. We don't see as, as much or hear as much about it here in the Pittsburgh area. Let's go back to the phones. Caller line five, you're on the air. Did we lose line five? I'm line five. Go ahead. Uh, I just came out of a hospital with congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. I had a, 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 a Capitan that I was supposed to be taking at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Due to my rushing around and running what I do, I kept forgetting it. As a result of it, I am down for the count right now for about a month. I uh, was rushed to a hospital with uh, uh, 
shortness of breath, I didn't think I was going to make it. I made it, and I got them right now. I'm going to preach to everybody. Do what you're told. Do you have a question for the doctor? The question is, what is neuropathy? Well, uh, first of all, you're right. Uh, people who need medications uh, should uh, take them uh, as directed. Or if they're having particular problems, discuss it with their physician. For instance, Capitin is a member of a class of drugs called um, ACE inhibitors. And there are many others that are longer uh, acting. So if you had trouble remembering your afternoon dose, your doctor may have been able to substitute a once a day preparation that would be equally effective. Neuropathy is a non-cardiac condition uh, where peripheral nerves are involved. It's a little off our topic. If, if there's time, we can get into it, but not really a cardiac condition. OK, I don't think we do have time to, to get off the track because we have a lot of ground to cover talking about heart disease, number one killer. But uh, Dr. Harvey Simon, he says that uh, you can conquer heart disease and without drugs and without surgery. We're going to be back to take more of your phone calls to continue with this very enlightening discussion right after this. We have a confession to make. Did Mrs. Bowles have anything to do with the murder? No. I did it alone. But we have the best lawyer in the country on retainer. But I didn't kill him. I didn't. Mr. Crinston killed him. All I did was call down to the car. Tell him, Mr. Crinston. Please, tell him. We confess Perry Mason is back in prime time, but they forced us to do it. They goaded us on until we couldn't stand it anymore. I killed him. But I did it because I love Martha. Yes, Perry Mason is back, often with familiar faces from other shows. Well, if this gets into the newspapers, it will. It's TV's classic courtroom drama, Perry Mason, weeknights at 10 on classic WQEX. You've had your lunch. Now, what's for dinner? Get ideas from our kitchen staff. Each weekday, a different chef takes you through cuisine that's continental, down home, or downright healthy. So tune that little kitchen TV to WQEX, where there's always something cooking. Weekdays at 1. Welcome back, Dr. Harvey Simon, the author of a brand new, right off the presses, Conquering Heart Disease. And doctor, you could uh, probably have a fan club in every corner of this country with some of your advice, which is a suggestion that a uh, little bit of alcohol goes a long way. It's really good for your heart. Um, what does alcohol do? Well, we call it fighting atherosclerosis with a smile, and it's one of the few things that pieces of advice that people really like to hear. What kind of research um, do you have to support? All this, this, an awful lot. The first study about alcohol in the heart was published in 1980, and over the last uh, 14 years, there have been at least a dozen studies which collectively show that low dose alcohol, one to two drinks a day, reduces the risk of a heart attack by about 40%. We so keep it's hearing very about red wine. Is it just red, red wine? No, that's really a, a fallacy. Uh, any form of alcohol will do it. It's the alcohol that's the most important component. Uh, red wine may give certain d additional benefits, but that's theory at this point. In practice, any form of alcohol will do it. But I have to caution you. A little is good, more is not better. Okay, so Alcohol abuse is a very terrible hazard to health. So it has to be cautious and judicious use of alcohol. Uh, do, do most of your colleagues agree with you, or are some of them saying that you're out there promoting alcoholism? It's an interesting question. I think my colleagues who have looked at the data have to agree that it's helpful for the heart, and we know why. It raises the HDL, or good cholesterol. That's the main mechanism. And it also helps dissolve clots, which are the final event causing heart attacks in most cases. So I think any physician or scientist who reads the data has to agree, but very, very few doctors recommend it. Why? Because we spend so much of our time dealing with cirrhosis of the liver, intestinal bleeding, trauma, 
uh, social problems and abuse caused by alcohol that we shy away from it. Right, and, and I'm sure you have to be very cautious that with some people, if, if they believe a little bit is good, a lot is going to be better. Let's get down to the biggie now, stress. Can stress really kill you? Well, it's controversial. I believe that stress is an important contributor to heart attacks, and I think most people agree with that. It's hard to quantify. We can't be quite as precise about stress levels as we can about blood pressure, or cholesterol, or number of cigarettes smoked, or a number of miles that people walk or jog or don't walk or jog. But uh, most careful studies point out that stress does uh, lead to heart attacks, contribute to heart attacks. Okay, you talk about behavior modification. Your publisher sent out a little pink page here and has some interesting things. It says, uh, don't do two things at once. Yeah, what I propose is a series, again, of options, ways to reduce stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they can be very simple things like physical exercise, like avoiding excessive caffeine that can jar people up, like trying to modify the world around us if a particular person or job or situation is causing stress. Those can help. But there are also behavioral exercises that people can do. Physical exercise improves the muscles, improves the heart, mm -hmm. and mental exercise can improve our response to stress. Trying to do one thing at a time only is helpful. Trying to drive in the slow lane is helpful. Don't use your horn. Uh, don't use your horn except to get somebody out of your <laughs> way when you really need to, but not to vent frustration. Talk to slowly. Oh, this one. Talk slowly and don't interrupt. Very important. <laughs> no, it's a, again, these are a series of exercises that people can do to learn to slow down. A I bit. just wanted to make sure I was going to interrupt you to ask you the question. I understand. Caller, line eight, you're on the air. Yes, Dr. Simon, in connection with stress and heart disease, what is your view about medications designed to reduce anxiety and stress? Mm -hmm. I think it can be, uh, medications can be very important as a uh, fallback position. We should all try to reduce, it's not an either or proposition, we should all try to reduce stress by uh, leading uh, more happy, fulfilling lives by uh, using exercise, meditation, deep breathing, behavioral modification. That's the baseline. For some of us, it's not enough. We may temporarily need medication. We may need social workers, pastoral counselors, psychiatrists. Again, there's a whole range of options. I like to see people use medicine only when necessary, only while necessary, and then hopefully get back to the basics. Dr. Dean Nornish, uh, in his book, talks about the importance of medication in, in reversing heart disease. Meditation. I what think. did I say? Medication. Oh, I said medication. Meditation. Yes, and I believe uh, he's right. I think meditation can be one of the options to reduce stress. Medication, if necessary, uh, meditation, uh, hopefully, will avert the need for medicine. Uh, you, we've talked about uh, dietary supplements, you talked about niacin, you talked about aspirin. Uh, you talk about fish. I don't hear you talking about chicken or any other kind of uh, poultry or meat. Well, uh, chicken and uh, turkey are good substitutes mm -hmm. uh, for red meat, but they do contain fat, they do contain cholesterol, and they should be used in moderation. Fish uh, contains fat also, but the fat in fish is a very special type of oil. It's called omega-3s, omega exactly. And omega-3s reduce blood clotting and help, I think, reduce inflammation in arterial walls. So that's one type of fat that we can like and should have two to three uh, meals of fish a week uh, to reduce the risk of heart disease. Doctor, who did you write this book for? Uh, did you write this book for the person who wants to prevent ever having heart disease or did you write this book for someone who is already suffering from heart disease? My question, I suppose, is, is it ever too late to start making these changes? It's not too late. And if I can use a uh, parable, perhaps, we can think of the American heart as the proverbial Pauline lashed down to the railroad tracks with the express train of a heart attack thundering down on her. Modern medication, catheterization, bypass surgery, they can slow the train, they can stop the train, maybe even put the train in reverse in some cases, but they can't get Pauline off the tracks. If we want to really fight atherosclerosis, the disease responsible for heart attacks, 
then we have to use these lifestyle techniques to loosen the bonds, get Pauline off the track. So it's not either or, and it really is never too late. The closer you are to having a heart attack, the more you need to get started. Okay, Dr. Harvey Simon, he's only going to be in Pittsburgh a matter of hours. You're going to be seeing his book uh, in the bookstores uh, anytime now, and uh, it's your big chance tonight. You can talk to him, call 683-1600. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. From the Edwardian age to our age, the drama endures. Upstairs, downstairs, weekday afternoons at four. A pompous twit. Look it up in the dictionary and you may find the picture of this man, Gordon Brittus. How can I help you? <laughs> when God was handing out the gifts of management and diplomacy, Gordon was definitely last in line. And now he's turning the Newtown Leisure Centre into an asylum. The British Empire, weeknights at 11.30 p.m. Dr. Harvey Simon is in the studio, and we're going to go right to the phones, Doctor, because we've got a lot of callers on the line. Caller line seven, you're on the air. Uh, is aspirin, Doctor, is aspirin just as effective as Cumidin? I'm, I'm on Cumidin, and I just wonder how long will I be on this Cumidin? You know, that depends entirely on the underlying condition. I can't give you specific medical advice. Uh, for some types of heart disease, Coumadin is superior. For other types of heart disease, aspirin is a very adequate substitute. And for some conditions, uh, say for prevention for people who don't have heart disease to begin with, aspirin is clearly superior uh, to using a prescription drug like Coumadin. So I can't give you a specific answer. It depends on what your own personal medical problem is. What about antioxidants? Uh, you, uh, you, you really uh, suggest that people consider them? Yes, I do. This is a threshold area in medicine. Uh, we uh, don't have the answers yet. I think there's substantial reason to believe that antioxidant vitamins, vitamin E particularly, also beta carotene or vitamin A and vitamin C, can reduce the risk of heart disease. It's not yet proven. It may take us four or five years to find out. I think that people who are at risk for high cholesterol, lack of exercise, uh, high blood pressure, God forbid tobacco abuse, things like that, um, may not want to wait the four or five years and may want to start moderate doses of antioxidants as long as they don't rely solely on that. It's a supplement, it's not a substitute. The best way to get the antioxidants is through vitamin-rich foods, deep green and yellow orange vegetables and uh, fruits. The problem is it's hard to get enough vitamin E, so it may be useful but to What take you're that. saying is, is uh, there's no real harm and it could do a lot of good. The doses are moderate, I agree, right. Caller, line six, you're on the air. Line six. Uh, I take Renolix for the heart and I take uh, Fern. I'll have to spell it, T-H-E-O-P-H-L-L-I-N-E. -E. And I want to know, can I take uh, alcohol with it, liquor, with that medication? Uh, I, I didn't quite catch the name. The first one was? It's supposed to be for the heart, and the name is Lanoxin. Lanoxin, yeah. And uh -huh. the other one is Theophylline. Yeah. Yeah, low, if there's no other reason to avoid alcohol, uh, one can have modest doses, a glass of wine with those medications. Don't wash the pills down with the medicine, <laughs> but you can uh, um, take them during the same day. Okay, uh, what about screenings, uh, doctor? How often should one have their cholesterol checked, for example? Um, th there's some dispute about that. Probably a lot less often than people think. Uh, cholesterol is something that has everybody's attention. People want to know what their cholesterol is. It's important mm -hmm. uh, that people do know. But if a healthy person has it checked every five years, 
that's probably enough at least until they're 40 and then maybe every two years. Uh, somebody who has a high level of family history, uh, other risk factors may need to check it more often and people who have high cholesterols and need treatment may need to have it checked several times a year even. The home cholesterol uh, kits, uh, are they accurate? They're fairly accurate as far as they go. The problem is they give you only one number, only the total cholesterol or the bad cholesterol. And we know that you need to know the HDL or good cholesterol to make sense of that. So I think it could be a little misleading. For instance, my cholesterol now is about 220, at least the last time I checked it several years ago. That seems a bit high, but my good cholesterol is extremely high, over 100. So my cholesterol numbers are unusually good. So you need to know both numbers. You need to know both. The home kits give you only one number. And I think to have people focus only on cholesterol right. uh, is a mistake. There are so many other things that are very important. How about a stress test? Uh, should uh, every older adult have a stress test? No. Uh, stress tests are really misleading for people who don't have symptoms. Uh, there are too many false positives as well as false negatives. So it's not a useful screening test to find out if you have hidden heart disease. Okay, let's go back to the phones. Caller line five, you're on the air. Hi, I was wondering exactly uh, what is aerobic exercise and why is it good for the heart? And what is the benefits of like say maybe golfing and the gardening? How much time do we have? Aerobic, <laughs> uh, aerobic exercises are those which use large muscles in a rhythmic, repetitive fashion for prolonged periods of time. Examples would be brisk walking, jogging, uh, swimming, biking, stationary bikes, stair climbers, et cetera, et cetera, aerobic dance, a lot of options. Uh, it helps the heart in many ways. It raises the HDL or good cholesterol, lowers the bad cholesterol, reduces blood pressure, reduces body fat, reduces blood clotting. So it really helps at all the stages of atherosclerosis. It also helps with stress. Uh, now your specific questions about golf, I'm afraid from an aerobic point of view, golf is a perfect way to ruin a two mile walk. And that cannot uh, always reduce stress that's either. That's right, at least if you're like I am <laughs> on the links. So I would say get your brisk uh, two to three mile walk and then play golf. It's not either or. Okay, doctor, you ask about how much time we have. We're down to about a minute and uh, we need a prescription from you. Your final prescription in less than a minute. Read my book. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's uh, there is no single thing. Uh, just uh, try to get back to the basics is what I would say. Try to lead the kind of life that we were designed to lead. Heart disease was a rarity in this country just 75 years ago. When people We've gone walk to wrong, work and... we can get back there and enjoy life as well. Okay. The title of the book is Conquering Heart Disease, New Ways to Live Well Without Drugs and Without Surgery. You truly believe, doctor, that many, in many instances, heart disease can be reversed? I believe it can. I'm sure it can be prevented, and I think in many cases it can even be reversed. Okay. Dr. Harvey Simon, thank you so much for sharing this half hour with us. I want to Pleasure invite to you here. to join me again next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Remember, every Wednesday night, the good years start right here. Have a nice evening, everyone.